Hi, I'm Darcy with Goliath Tech Utah. In most of our episodes, you see us installing our helical piles for projects like decks, docks, foundations, and many other things. However, today's gonna be a little bit different. Let's go on a field trip and see what happens after we leave. What is a helical pile and how does it work? A helical pile is a long steel shaft with a helix. It achieves its torque from the soil friction on the helix and the shaft. When using a high torque, low speed drill, we can measure the torque achieved between the helical pile and the soil. Helical piles can be used for spot footings, for deep foundations, for tiebacks, and many other applications. We're here in Pleasant View, Utah, where we used helical piles on a slope. The initial land had a large slope on it where we were on native soil on one side, but about 35 feet deep on the other side. Using helical piles throughout the foundation and footings, we were able to drill down to native soil that they could backfill everything around it without having to spend extensive time doing that um, and multiple compaction tests. Let's check out the lot. You can see that the natural slope is quite deeper than the height of the house. This allows us to be able to put the helical piles down till we reach past native soil, but they can still have this lot to be able to build. It makes lots that were previously very difficult to figure out how to build or time consuming to build, to be able to make them have a quick turnover rate and be cost effective. My name is Dave Green. I'm with Wasatch View Construction. We're doing this big project here. It's actually my own home, so I'm a little more cautious probably than normal, but we brought in 15 feet of fill and compacted it. But even with that being said, I was still a little nervous of some possible settling issues. So um, I checked around and came across the name of Goliath Tech and got into contact with Darcy. And she was super helpful in um, helping me get the project started and what we needed to do. We got with an engineer and decided how many of the piles we would need, set the whole project up. And after talking to my wife, we felt like it was a good investment, even though we didn't have it budgeted into our project, but just knew that over time, um, it was gonna be a lot better um, for us to know that we would not have settling issues. Kind of a, what you would, I guess you would say, an insurance policy. We decided to move ahead and Darcy was great. Um, the day we, we needed her to show up, she was there with multiple crews, got the project done on time. Everything went just great. It's been a wonderful experience working with Goliath Tech and I would recommend everybody that's in the same situation to give her a call. We're now at White Rock Subdivision in North Ogden. At Goliath Tech, we work with home builders, developers, and any contractors. In this subdivision, we've been working with the developer to put all of the houses on piles throughout the whole thing. Some of them are a full slab on grade, and some of them are a mix, partial slab on grade and partial foundation walls. So we've got the whole entire subdivision all on piles and all saving money and time to get them in the ground. You'll be able to see houses in different stages. Some of them are at the initial excavation stage. Some of them have the concrete poured. Some of them are done framing. But with all of them, the one thing you're gonna find consistent is all of those foundations will be anchored beneath the frost and solid. Let's go check them out. A typical grade beam with a slab on grade on helical piles is the piles installed and then a two to three inch polyfoam or any void form underneath. That void form is used for any soil movement. So if the ground freezes or moves at all, there's somewhere for that frozen soil to go within the frost. But we have our piles anchored underneath the frost and then the grade beam only has to be typically 18 inches. So that polyfoam is used for any soil movement and then the concrete's on top of it. We have this here before backfill and we're gonna have backfilled at least a minimum of 12 inches or above that. But that void form basically creates the whole entire thing like a suspended slab. The process is that we come in after it's excavated, we put the piles in and then the concrete company comes in and forms, puts the polyfoam in, rebar, and pours. They'll be able to pour the grade beams and the slab at the same time. 
saving time and money so the concrete company doesn't have to come out multiple times. You don't have nearly as much concrete because our piles are anchored below the frost line. So the concrete doesn't have to be anchored below the frost line. My name's Rhett and this is my partner, Kurt. We uh, own a company, Triple Crown Homes. Whether the soil required it or not, we would have used this technique now that we've been doing it for two and a half years because of what it saves us. We order concrete once. There's not concrete for footings and then wait for the footings to dry sufficiently to put a foundation wall on top of, wait for them to get the foundation back built. Wait for the foundation to dry to backfill it. With this process, we're formed up before plumbing. As soon as we get underground plumbing and steel inspected, we pour one time. We're literally able to frame in a day or two instead of dig the hole, wait for footings, wait for foundation, wait for backfill, wait for underground plumbing, pour the flat work, wait for the flat work. We do it, it's done, the framer can move in. So it's a significant time savings in the, on the right project. Utah, like so many other states, is experiencing a major housing shortage. This is for many different reasons, but the end result is we don't have enough houses. Houses in Utah have jumped and skyrocketed in price. Anywhere that's simple to build has already been built on. So what do contractors have an option to do? Build in areas that maybe may not be ideal. The second problem that we're having is that there's not anywhere for new people that have never owned a home before that don't have any equity to buy a new house. Contractors have been commissioned to build starter homes. What we have here is we had a lot that a previous house was built on, nestled between two little houses in downtown Ogden, Utah. The house that was previously here was demoed and so it was a flat lot. However, during the demo process, it was not excavated and done correctly so you could build immediately on it. Some of the concrete was left down there, another debris, and then the dirt was just put over the top. So we have about four to five feet under the existing grade that just had random items in it and that was definitely not suitable to build on. The developer that purchased the lot has been working with Goliath Tech for about three years and knows the benefits of using helical piles. In a lot like this, we are nestled really close to the fences and to be able to excavate all of the ground out of here that needs to be taken out and then compacting what needs to be compacted and then the footings and all of that would be very time intensive and very invasive to this nice community that's very close and tight quarters. During due diligence, the contractor contacted us and asked if we could come out here with the geotech and investigate the soils. So we came out and we installed a couple piles in multiple locations to really see the compression of that soil. We were able to drill down and see where native soil started in a few locations and with the geotech determine our minimum depth, which was about five feet from grade. At that point, the geotech provided the report and the contractor purchased the lot. The contractor engineered the house to be built on helical piles with a slab on grade approach. With that approach, we're able to put the piles in with a very simple scrape of the existing grade and then we can install our piles. He can shoot in the gravel, form around the outside, and backfill about 12 inches. Another major benefit for using helical piles in new construction for spot footings is that we can get our helical pile exactly where we need it, and you don't have a sono tube with a post that's set off center. I was at the Parade of Homes one time, walking through seeing an absolutely beautiful home. And as I went through, I saw the spot footing for the deck. And again, the footing was here and the post was right over on the edge. It met cold, but it was clear over and didn't look great. Being in the industry I am and what we do, I thought oh, they should have used helical piles. However, a couple that was walking behind us looked at it and said, oh, somebody missed the mark on that one, didn't they? 
with helical piles, your craftsmanship shows and isn't overwhelmed by some spot footing they got in the wrong spot. CF Olson does amazing custom homes in Northern Utah. Those homes are beautiful on the inside and on the outside, all of the spot footings are on helical piles. What we do with this is after the roof is built and temped up, we come in and shoot a laser from the point down at the bottom and we hit the beam that's up top. With that laser, then we triangulate and put additional lasers outside of that so we can move that laser out of the way and then we have our exact location we need to put our helical pile. After that helical pile is in, we then put our laser back on it to make sure we're precisely in the right location. That way, when the build is finished, it looks fantastic. My name is Jaden Olson. I own Ballpark Engineering. We're up here in uh, North Salt Lake at one of the projects that I'm working on. Um, as a structural engineer, I don't necessarily focus on new construction. I do a lot of remodel work. I can't even tell you how often we, we use Goliathek. The helical pier system that we use fits so many different applications. We use it in retaining wall retention, cracks in concrete walls that are forming, and we need to tie back the wall for whatever reason. All the time we're using this in uh, tight location access. If we have to get in and do something quickly, uh, where concrete takes days to dry and cure, uh, we use a helical pier to support on a quick time frame. We use these a lot, especially on decks or protrusions on the home that would otherwise be difficult to support or expensive to support with traditional foundations. Helical piers are, have been a lifesaver for a lot of my clients. They're a lot more cost effective and a lot faster, and they're, they're an extremely valuable foundation system. When I'm looking for a house to flip, a lot of the time flippable houses have foundation issues. They have additions that have been added on that have not been permitted properly or we have issues with all kinds of different foundation stuff. If I'm going to look at buying a house, I need to know my options as far as repairing the foundation. Expensive options that require a lot of time and material are going to be any concrete repairs. We can mitigate a lot of time and uh, efficiency using a helical pile system. And they go in a lot quicker, a lot easier to get full access to, and they work extremely well. What I also like about them is they don't bear directly at the same grade as the existing footings adjacent to wherever we're repairing, but they bear below those footings. So we, we send the helical pile below the existing foundation and anchor below that, which reduces overburden on any existing footings. When we're looking at uh, old homes that need to have bearing walls removed or that weren't necessarily constructed adequately, we see sagging in the roof or ceiling. Um, helical piers are a great application because when we come in, and have to core through an existing footing or find a new, new load path, uh, helical pier is going quickly. We can core drill through the existing footing, send a helical pier down, and then bear a post right on top of it. We find that it's fairly unobtrusive compared to cutting out a large spot footing below a post or anything that way, and they go a lot quicker, a lot easier. It's a single day job instead of a seven day job. Yeah, everybody that I've talked to absolutely loves the work Goliath Tech does. They come in, they get it done, they do it right the first time, and very, not very often do we have to have them come back, if at all. Um, but it's a one-time job. We get in, we get done, and we do it right, and we have a new foundation for a home that was otherwise in disrepair. Soil varies all across the Wasatch Front, everywhere, essentially. Code says minimum bearing capacity in general soils without having a specific soil study done is 1,500 pounds per square foot. Helical piers are able to compete ex extremely well for small spot footings and replace them entirely with a single post connection and a single screw into the ground. Thanks for coming along on our field trip. You can get off the virtual bus. Just make sure you keep your hands, legs, and feet inside at all times until we... Oh, that sounds really dumb. <laughs> Today you've seen how helical piles can be used for many different applications. Today we visited decks, porches, slab on grade, and deep foundations. If you have any project that you need to anchor below the frost line, give us a call. Let's see if we can help you out too.